All right, everyone. My name is Nebraska Thunderfuck, a.k.a. Mackenzie Claude. I have... Derek Barry here, reporting for duty, for service. A.k.a. Brittany Bitch. And I also have... Good day from Nick San Pedro, coming to you live from Las Vegas. <laughs> This is our first ever Thruple podcast, where we will be discussing current events, entertainment, and RuPaul's Drag Race. We would like to rebrand this show now as Thruple Thoughts. So... I like that. Thruple Thoughts? Mm Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Coined it, phrased it, patented. Okay, we are now called Thruple Thoughts. I do want to let people know, in case they're wondering, what a Thruple is. That word is a derivative of three and couple. What is your guys' experience like being in a thruple? Crickets. Ah, that's your experience. It is crickets. I wish Manella was almost here to do the cricket noises. I can't believe they cut that part out of our ASMR Queens episode. It was in there. It was a sad, sad day when I realized 15 minutes and you couldn't afford three second crickets. She sounded like real crickets. Yeah, Manila had done her hidden secret talent, which is that she can perfectly sound like a like a bunch of crickets in a field. And it was left on the cutting room floor. Mm. Cutting room floor. Derek, can you do the sound of crickets? That's not a cricket. I'm trying. Uh, was, you think yours was a cricket? A frog. Oh, mine was way more cricket than your frog. If you're feeling froggy, leap. Wow, thank you. That was so relaxing. Current events. The Las Vegas quarantine. Quarantini. Ooh. lives changed at all since the quarantine went into effect in Las Vegas. Look hot in a quarantine bikini. Has you better not work, bitch. Oh, that was good. Mm-hmm. I think you should come up with your own lyrics to that song. I'm here all day. Unfortunately, stuck here <laughs> all day. First of all, let's talk about the Las Vegas quarantine. Mm-hmm. The Las Vegas trip has went dark. Has went dark? Oh, honey, has went. Oh my god, this is what it's like. The Las Vegas ship has went dark. It has went dark. Did you guys hear about that? Being in a two-way relationship is constantly being trolled by two different people all the time. And luckily you have two ears. One to hear us each with. So the Las Vegas strip has gone dark for the first time since it first started? Las Vegas I first. I don't think any of this has happened. It's before. so sad. I was born and raised in Vegas, and this is the first time where Vegas is not happening, and it's the first time that I've had to distance myself from my family, and it feels surreal. Yeah, because your parents are older, and you don't want to risk them getting sick. Even though you feel fine, there's just no guarantee. People could be carriers. You just don't want to be responsible for doing something like that to someone in your family. So you're like, no, I can't see you. I'm sorry. We have to wait until we find out if everybody's going to be okay. And how long has it been since you've seen your family? Well, I've seen my family from, you know, six feet away, you know, but... Just them coming to drop stuff It's crazy. And in my mind, it's so emotional, but I'm not going to show them that because I I want them to feel okay right now. When's the last time that you actually got to spend quality time with them in person? Not since we celebrated birthdays, like in January, before, like, people were really finding out that something was going around. And a little backstory, Nick sees his family at least once a week. They are super close. Yeah, his whole entire family is here. Mm -hmm. I have a big... Except his sister. ...family, uh, settled in Vegas at the turn of the century and everybody had lots of babies and cousins and so not settled century we've been here for a long time we've been here for a long time Cubans, Spanish, Chinese. That's another crazy thing is uh, being part Chinese and hearing people say craziest things about this virus. I didn't know if you were settling like uh, John Uh, Smith or something. uh, Settling Pocahontas. Yeah, my family settled up in here in the Southwest. Mm. A long time ago, boo-boo. 
and now we are here in the southwest of Las Vegas, <laughs> the southernmost <laughs> western parts. So when do you think that you'll be able to see your family again? I hope so. spend quality time with but, them. But, you know, everything that we're hearing, people are talking about being quarantined for months to come, so I have no idea what's going to happen. I feel like I've been preparing for this my entire life because mm. I'm not very close with my family. And oh, I thought you were going to say not very social. And I'm not very social. Oh, that's Contrary cool. to working in nightlife. I mean, when I'm not working, I just love being at home with my babies and watching television. You got kids? <laughs> yeah, two of them right in front of me. Where they live, boo. <laughs> So Derek, have you noticed any changes in the community in Las Vegas? I have noticed that over the past two weeks, I have not tweezed my eyebrows, which is very different for most day-to-day uh, -day life. I tweeze them every day before the show, yeah. and now they've been untweezed. Oh. Do not say plucked eyebrows. We are not chickens. We tweeze our eyebrows. And do not say dye our hair. It is color. So basically what you're saying is that the Las Vegas show went on hiatus. Along with my tweezing, yes. <laughs> Completely on hiatus. So tell me about what that experience was like. Did you expect the show to go on hiatus? I knew the show was going to go dark. When did you know that? It was three to five days before it went dark. Okay. I'd warned everybody in February to early March that the show was going to go dark. The NBA is what started it all. Yeah, yeah. That is mm -hmm. the first thing that I saw headlines. It was and I'm the, like, first, the first the entertainment NBA, domino. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And then it also, I thought, okay, well, those are arenas. They're yeah. going to cancel arena shows, mm -hmm. stadium shows. But we seat under a 1,000 people. So I thought, okay, well, we're going to be fine. But once Broadway closed, I knew we were headed out next. Wynn had shut down their shows. But those were the very first thing in Las Vegas they were announced to close. To close, but they mm -hmm. had a closing date. Which we knew was going to lead to a chain reaction. Yeah, we actually ended up closing the day that the buffets did. Mm -hmm. It which just wasn't. I think later. it was. I think it was Sunday, March 14th. I'd have to look at a calendar. Mac and I were at home so worried because the whole world was shutting down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all these days before us. And here Derek was on the front lines still dancing down on the Las Vegas Strip. Las Vegas built off of tourism. The audiences that fill those shows are mostly tourists mm -hmm. from all different parts of the world. So if there's this virus that's spreading throughout the world... Vegas is going to be one of the first places that it's going to hit in America, mm -hmm. just like New York or L.A., because mm -hmm. we, our entire economy is built off of tourism. Well, and you have to think of the, the landscape of the Strip. You're talking about three miles, mm -hmm. and we're, Vegas is built in a valley. Exactly. So, so everything is condensed. Stuck. Yes. Everything is condensed to, to the strip. A lot strip. like New York. A be. lot like New York. Even, uh, even New York is closer together. Everybody from all over the world is going to this one street on Las Vegas in hotels and casinos and everyone's wasted and yeah. running around together and in close quarters. So, so if you guys are just uh, listening, we'll catch you up we're talking about the closure of rupaul's drag race live at the flamingo mm -hmm. it opened on january 30th we were open for six weeks and then obviously now it's on hiatus yeah uh caesars had announced that they are going dark for all of their shows caesars entertainment if you guys don't know owns about half the las vegas strip so we're talking about caesars paris bally's link Harris uh, and Flamingo. On a lot and of hotels. Cromwell. So. Rio. That's the Chippendales going dark. That's Cirque shows going dark. Yeah. That's all of the famous Las Vegas shows you've ever heard it's of. It's unprecedented. Are on hiatus right now. And now everybody's unemployed. The entire casino industry. Everybody. So Las Vegas is freaking out right now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the one thing that sustains all of our population. The one thing that brought everyone here to begin with. Is gone. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I am like a huge political news junkie, world news junkie. Please do not uh, put this in there. That was fake news. <laughs> Allegedly. So I had started reading junkie. about this virus in January, and I had been updating both of you on 
What? Use twos. I had started reading. I'm so over you. I had no. started reading. <laughs> I had started reading. Can I tell before We're we... We're getting real country today. Well, I'm from Kentwood, uh, allegedly. When I first came to Vegas, I was 12 years old. I came with my brother and my mom and my stepdad. We drove in down the 15, which is the main highway. <laughs> and... All I saw was casinos because from the highway, all you see are casinos starting at Mandalay Bay all the way up to Stratosphere. There's just one casino after another. So I thought that the Las Vegas Strip was it. I thought that that's where everyone lived. I thought if you worked in a casino, you lived in one. I didn't know <laughs> there were homes. So I thought, oh, well, these hotels are so big because they have to house the entire staff of everybody that works there. Uh, little did I know that, you know, years later I would live here and have a condo here and a home and be so outside of the Strip and away from the busyness of the, the Las Vegas Strip. We live in the suburbs in the mountains, almost. If you've seen Desperate Housewives, that's <laughs> us. We're about 15 minutes away from the Strip. Sometimes we forget we even live in Las Vegas when we we're... do? <laughs> yeah. And then we'll go there for an event or something and be like, oh yeah, this place is really awesome. There was six months that went by. That's the longest ever. Yeah. Where we did not go to the Strip. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this will pass that, but that was when I was traveling after RuPaul's Drag Race Season 8 and on the road. And so there was no reason to go down there. I didn't have gigs on the Strip. I uh, had taken a break from the show I was in. So it was crazy to go back down. And a lot like Times Square, it is always exciting. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're down in Times Square, it's exciting. Anytime you're on Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard, as a tourist, those are exciting things to go see. Las Vegas is a lot like that. It's just exciting to see the Strip. So to backtrack, I have been reading updates about the coronavirus yeah. uh, spreading in China back in oh, excuse me. early January, and I would update the boys. I'd be like, you guys, this is unlike anything I've ever read about Ebola, yeah. Zika, SARS, like all of those kind swine. of- Swine. <laughs> swine. <laughs> This was different. I knew by the measures that China was taking. You to, said they were burning their money. They were burning currency. Mm -hmm. They were spraying the streets. I was like, well, this is this is not a normal virus. Derek no. and I knew something crazy was happening when this all started back in China because Mac was CNN live reporting news uh, every day to us. It was MTV. MSNBC. Every hour on he the hour. He would tell you what they're saying on Fox News, too, because he needed to know what everybody was saying. You went to Fox? It was really fascinating. Yeah, and to see it evolve to now... You know, a couple months later, us being on lockdown. Now, I also had heard about this from Banji because we started Vegas rehearsals, which was, I want to say January 6th. Yeah. Was a Monday. I have a calendar in my head. That was our first day of rehearsals in the dance studio with the cast and mm -hmm. Jamal and everybody. And uh, she was talking about Corona in the very beginning. Can you give us an example of something she would say? Oh God. Did y'all bitches see on the news? We all gonna die. <laughs> no, that was like, <laughs> that was like Bianca. I don't know what that, that was. That was really good. I liked was it. Was it? I enjoyed it. And March. <laughs> Water. Vanjie's a character. Oh she, my God, I love she's her. She's always in character and she is so entertaining to be around. And I was so excited to work with her because we had done Germany's Next Top Model. Uh, Nebraska filled in on that. Banji was the reason that you got that, one of them. She yeah, said, you yeah. do Lady Gaga. Oh, he, that's Nebraska's number one character. And then they put that on the show. <laughs> Banji and Nick yeah. were, were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, in my mind thinking, no fucking way, I didn't even bring my makeup to LA. And I have a black wig and a mini dress. There's no way I could do this. I had never done Lady Gaga before. But then when they told me how much money it was, I was like, I do Lady Gaga. Oh. Yes. What, what time we filming? Yeah, what time? Very Julia Roberts in pre And then I had like two hours to get ready. So that was with Vanjie and Silky. Yeah. And we shot that last year, which was so much fun. That was a special, a special memory. Yeah. So getting to work with Vanjie has been uh, the highlight for me of the Las Vegas show for sure. We sat next to each other. Uh, we made sure we were in the same dressing room. I just, I, I love every chance that I get to spend with her. We still keep in touch, obviously, through the quarantini. 
Vanji is probably who you keep in touch with the most. The, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Vanji, for keeping my baby so happy at work. Honey, I've been laughing still, thinking so, about you and the hangers. <laughs> <laughs> what is your daily life like now that you're in quarantine? I get up, 